So welcome everyone. Today I'm supremely delighted once again for the second time to introduce Dr. Cindy Reid, who is Head of Research at the Tiller Foundation, and I will get her in a moment to tell you all about that. But first of all, um, Cindy, it is just delightful to see your face again. And our first interview, I got a lot of amazing response from our first interview. So if you haven't seen it yet, I will put a link to it in the description box. But welcome, Cindy. How are you? I, you know, I'm great. These are exciting times at the Tiller Foundation. Very, very exciting. You know, we've come really far in the last couple of years. We took Dr. Tiller's work, the culmination of his experiments and his work with individuals and his human studies research. He did uh, studies on people for depression, anxiety, for uh, autism, for autism caregivers, for compassion. And so we've taken those and put them into generalized intentions that people can actually subscribe to. So your listeners could benefit from Dr. Tiller's work from his 50 plus years of work in helping them uh, develop their own coherence and elevate their own coherence and actually get information inserted to manifest in their own reality. So that's just sort of a basic level that is that's continuing the testimonials we're getting with that work is amazing. Um, and I can share some of those with you if we have some time, but um, the exciting thing is from there we're continuing on to look at other ways and you know Sarita the incredible thing is that so far we haven't found anything that intention doesn't work with. Yeah. That so, that's amazing, isn't it? So for, for those of you who don't know, basically, William Tiller was a physicist. I'll just give you a brief praise here. And he worked at Stanford University and went down all the conventional roads. And then he got interested in psychoenergetics and particularly how intention affects our reality, even at the level of kind of the cells of the body and started to apply his physicist brain and research um, to document this basically and then you've all taken it one step further haven't you and you're now basically this is how we ended the last interview I remember this now so basically now what you do is you have um, you people can access your website put their names and address of either of themselves or someone else and you will broadcast an intention to their telephone number and their address so that the space that they're living in becomes an intentional space having been coupled to a higher level of reality so a higher gauge symmetry state um which is then basically pulling i don't know i would describe this as pulling information from source consciousness and directing it without the um if you like the muddle of sub subconscious or unconscious thoughts from human beings if you like so that the space that people are living in is being intentionally um manifested for them in accordance with what they desire and at the moment just just to clarify so you've got you're obviously you've got you can you can purchase um an ongoing intention to assist people with autism assist carers of autism and physical health physical health mental health mental health and memory i mean in yeah the US, alzheimer is a huge huge issues for people yeah so you've got mental health and memory under one umbrella physical under one umbrella and then you've got prosperity and abundance haven't you yeah and prosperity and abundance isn't just about money it's really yes. about connecting you with your soul's purpose and yeah. helping you to live out the life that you really that you came down here to live um, now we all get all bungled up with our programs and media and everything else. I mean, we have, uh, <laughs> I know, yeah, <laughs> electronics that goof up your Zoom and all of that. But you know, we have, we all have our 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 belief, our high soul spirit, our plan that we come in with, and then we live in the three D world, which kind of goofs up our plan, and we get a little bit confused. We um, actually, uh, Tiller found that we operate in sort of two levels of reality. One is our 3D that we can touch and feel and taste, 
And the other one is sort of where our mind resides and our emotions. And so, you know, when we think something, it doesn't automatically come true, right? So that's a, he found there's a different level there. And in that other level, along with our mind and our emotions resides our high soul spirit. And it's the interface between the two things that actually lets you bring information down to the 3D level of reality and manifest it. And so- So sorry to interrupt you. So would you say that your intentional experiments and the um, unimprinted electrical device, which we can go into in a bit, basically it's, it's like permanently coupling those two levels so that the space that you're inhabiting is meeting your soul's higher purpose so the mind, the emotion, and the spirit, if you like, or your soul's journey with your physical journey in this plane. And then I guess you're bringing them into coherence and alignment so that you, they're not rubbing against each other. They're not fighting with another. And you start to have a more. Yeah. And, you know, it's not that they're they're What we're doing is the first thing that the device does, the intentions do is they make that that interface between the two levels um, more robust, greater, so that the communication can go. Because the place we get stopped all the time is that those two levels of our realities are disconnected. Yes. And so we don't get the information and we can't send the information between the two levels. And so the first thing is we've got to increase that communication. So the information can go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And it's trying to continuously, but our 3D world um, makes that interface incoherent. So you're saying that that's the higher self or the soul's purpose is trying to communicate with the material body. And then the material body is having the experience and trying to communicate back so that there's, you know, so the choices, if you like, are more aligned. But then that's what's being muddled up. And so you're bringing that that interface back together. So there's a smooth, smooth communion going on, basically. And people, everyone experiences this. I mean, we all have the infrastructure inside of us to make that interface more robust, but we don't often pay attention to it and develop it. I mean, we have to develop it just like we develop good eating habits or exercise or that kind of stuff. But you, ex people experience that all the time. You have a gut level feeling about something. That's a piece of information that just got through to you so that you can act on it. Um, a lot of times we don't. Um, and, you know, I recently found something interesting. I work a lot with my computer and it, it's been sort of a love hate relationship. And lately, uh, if I'll be typing, if I'll be irritated or something and typing something that's maybe a little bit sharper than I want it to be, my computer board will jam. It won't, the keys won't work and things will just muck up until I change my thoughts, I change my words, and I decide to do something. And then, it, I mean, it's I've just started to notice this, and that's like, really, even my computer is correcting and monitoring. But it's really it's it's information from my high soul self that says no, 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 don't don't quite go down that road. Soften things up a little bit. So, I, um, so here, I just for curiosity, are you sending? Are you are you working with one of these intentions? Are you doing memory and mental health, or are you doing anything in your own? in your own house i'm doing so here's what i'm doing in my own house i'm doing myself and my husband are doing all three intentions okay physical health, mental health memory and prosperity and i've had uh buddha relics devices running in our house since about 2012 okay well we have to go back and talk about buddha relics because i don't know what they are and they're really excited that sounds that's really exciting but just to clarify so for people who don't know about the work so when we talk about an unimprinted electrical device, basically what William Tiller was doing was he was getting an unimprinted, literally electrical box. And he was, if you like, filling it with some practice meditators with a specific intention and then putting that intention, that box in a space, which was then affecting everything within the space. And now, as far as I understand it, that unimprinted electrical device talks to one of your supercomputers is this how it works tell me how exactly how it works so with the computers and the how how are you imprinting the the addresses so that our viewers know exactly the process yeah sure so he he actually created a device that stores consciousness and mm -hmm. broadcasts consciousness now it only holds the consciousness for about three sometimes six months 
So it's short lived. So um, we, he uses experienced meditators. And the reason he uses those folks is because they can focus. Yes. They can concentrate and they know how to hold um, space in mind. And so he uses them. They put the, their conscious thoughts into that electrical device via a very specific meditation. And then when you plug that device in, it starts to radiate out that consciousness, that frequency, that intention, but on a quantum physics level. So if you look at the box and you take it to an electrician or electrical engineer, they'll say, well, this is no big deal. Um, an empty so box. <laughs> Little delay note, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, and what he found, um, he demonstrated most clearly with water, but you can be, you can have the device in a room and you can have uh, the target, we call them, in the room and the intention works. You can have the target. He did experiments as far as way as um, Payson, Arizona here in the US over to Italy and the target changed. So same thing with the autism experiment. We had a, a, at least one family in Australia and their child got better. So it works over distance. But what we found is that your name, your address, and now your cell phone number act as locators in the quantum physics space. All that combination of numbers and letters um, act as a locator so that that frequency targets you. And when you're out and about and you're carrying your cell phone, it's targeting your cell phone. So you have sort of this space around you as well. This so, but basically, and but you're running the names and addresses through a computer constantly, twenty four seven, when somebody signs up to receive to be a target, basically. Yes. So what happens um, is that we have we have a lab space, it's highly conditioned, and we have a, a device that we've imprinted with a specific intention. And it's plugged in all the time. And we have a computer that actually scrolls names. Um, and the, so those names are exposed on the screen to that space for a certain number of minutes a day. And that, um, that broadcast goes out to that person then 24 seven. So it's different than sitting with your own intentions and reading them in the morning or reading them six times a day or however, what, what I kind of call the uh, sort of old and slow method. Yeah. Uh, also the, the, old me the method which is subject to your unconscious beliefs this is this is what i think makes a huge difference as well doesn't it it does and part of the prosperity intention is to um, dispel any self-limiting beliefs that you may have um, about the things that you came here to do so that's a very nice part of that um, and so uh, when the name scroll, the intention rolls, the frequency goes out to the target and then things start to change. First thing that changes is that interface gets to be more robust. So the communication increases. Yeah. And so the more the communication increases, the more things start to change. Usually for someone that has no experience with this and is not a meditator or done a lot of spiritual work, just maybe sort of average person living their life who wants to take it up a notch, um, it may take 30, 60 days to kind of get that interface so it's working really, really well. Um, and then the intention inserts information into that that can go to the up to the second level of reality and come back down to the 3D if it's in concert. And, and tell me something else. So basically every three or six months you're getting, you basically... You take the device, you re-imprint it again and put it back in with the computer. I actually gifted somebody um, the mental the mental one, the mental memory one, and I did notice a difference. I, I am noticing a difference with them, and they're noticing a difference as well. Yeah. So um, you, you can, I mean, obviously I work with this stuff all the time anyway, but it's quite interesting to watch it in contrast where, I, if you like, I've taken myself out of the picture and I'm just witnessing what your um you know what your computer and your unimprinted or imprinted electrical device rather in this case is actually if the change it's affecting it, it really do, does seem to make a difference could you just get, cite us a few testimonials and examples or sure. things that you've you've witnessed before we go to the sure. relics device which i really want to know about <laughs> well you know last time i think i talked all about myself 
And so this time I'm going to right? tell you love that too. <laughs> this time I'm going to tell you what other people have said. Okay. So this person said, my first month with the intention broadcast is already working well. For the last 10 years, if not longer, I've been counting my pennies, not having holidays, not being able to uh, pay my bills always, and always a little worried about the future. After the financial intention broadcast with Tiller, I now have no worries but complete trust that all is more than well and I will not have to settle and struggle anymore. As a therapist, January can be very quiet work-wise, but as soon as I went back to work, 10 days after setting the intention, I've been really busy, busier than I can ever remember being in January. The best thing is that I feel that everything is amazing and will fall into place like never before. Yesterday on the new, first new moon of the year, I activated my newly created vision boards and I'm so excited. Having yeah, that's wonderful. The and then, yeah, and then once you've overridden something like that, you're just in it now and then the prosperity is coming, isn't it? So I think it's quite hard for people to, especially when you're looking at abundance or money issues or lack or prosperity or unworthiness, it, just to get over that last thing. So if you can get over it, then you're away. And it sounds like this sort of just really just helps you. I'll tell you, I think my experience with the financial broadcast has been not that a, I got a big bucket of money that dropped in my lap, but my own self-limiting beliefs about yeah. money have dissipated. And I think one of the things we recognize is that that because we're all programmed in this 3D world, that can impact yeah, the it communication does. manifestation. Mm -hmm. And so to have information inserted that that gets rid of those self-limiting beliefs is huge. Yeah. You know, if everyone on the planet could get rid of those beliefs that limit them in money, in love, in meaningful work, in whatever, um, I mean, it would be a different place here. Yeah, it would be a totally different planet, wouldn't it? <laughs> We'd all stop fighting and competing with one another for a start. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the broadcasts are available. Let me read you one more about the physical. Um, she says, he says, I've put a lot of thought and effort into writing a five-year life-threatening disease, and the Tiller Foundation spoke to my intuition. To my utter happy amazement, yesterday, my blood work came back normal, my ultrasound showed the affected area in proper working order, and the tumor was completely gone, but a shadow of a scar. My doctors are flabbergasted with disbelief, but they can see the results in their own eyes. That's amazing. How long was this person running his uh, intention device? Um, this well, probably was about three months. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Now the research shows we did four human studies and the research shows it can take up to about a year because we have no way to measure how, how well the communication is going, how many self-limiting beliefs you have and how much yeah. you're programming from, um, the 3d reality is interfering with what your soul wants to do. And so, and what would you say? I mean, obviously, this is always going to be the thing that if you're, you know, if you want, let's say you wanted to give somebody this who was very ill. Um, but obviously, nobody wants to be ill. You know, most people holding the intention to get well. But if your soul's purpose is to transition, then this cannot, would you say this cannot override something like that? This, we have, just, Dr. Tiller designed the device and we design each intention so that it cannot override your soul's purpose. So if your soul's purpose was to come and live a specific life and we're bombarding you with an intention that's exactly the opposite of that, that intention isn't going to manifest because it's in direct contrast to your soul's purpose. And it's really what we've found experientially is that it's really only your 3D programming that overrides your soul spirit. Or well, yeah, okay. I mean, I suppose it can only override it to some degree. At, at other degrees, your soul's purpose is always, if you like, gonna have the final say. <laughs> Somehow, yeah. Somehow, some way. <laughs> some way. yeah, exactly. Okay, that's really interesting. I want to ask you actually quickly before we move on to the Buddha. I've got so many questions for you. What was your, you know, like on a personal level, obviously, in a way, this all of this work, if you like, does prove 
um, the I guess it proves the concept that we are the creators and that there is a soul's higher purpose. And if you like source, you know, source, source consciousness, the creator of which we are a part, it kind of proves that basically. We're basically seeing science prove that just the way that Bruce Lipton found, you know, God in a cell, you know, um, with his biology of belief. What's happening? You know, when you first started, I, I think I remember you telling me you were a nurse when you first started. So and what has your, you know, your personal beliefs about the creator or God or why we're here? How have you sort of, has, has it changed? Have you always felt like this? You know, like what's happened to you, like on a personal note, sort of witnessing this marriage of science and, if you like, spirit? Well, I, I grew up in a church, in the Lutheran church, so I had a pretty strong belief anyway and came from a religious family but once i found bill tiller and his intention model i'll tell you i've been excited for years about the possibility of this for our world i mean i was a nurse working in a hospital and uh, you know they're not great places right doing everything i could to change it to make it better for patients blah 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 and there are so many somebody once described it as a giant hairball you know you pull something out and something else gets out of whack and so, but I was so excited about this technology just to run in hospitals, just to run with people that are experiencing and need better health care and need to get healthy and improve their mental health and all of that. But the system is totally against it because this is a low cost technology. No pharmaceutical company is going to make any money off of it. No big healthcare organization is going to make any money off of it. No insurance company is going to reimburse for it. Um, and so while if it was in the hands of a pharmaceutical company, it would probably cost, oh, I don't know, the new drugs cost like, what, $100,000 for a month or something. I mean, it's just unbelievable what things cost. This is $50 a month. Yeah. So it, it really is. It's something that we've got to that I, I tried in the system for years. I mean, it took it took 12 and now it took 14 years to get the first scientific article published. 14 years. Yeah, of course. It's amazing. You managed to do it at all, frankly. <laughs> Except that, the, you know, things are really changing upon this planet. But did you always, I mean, did you feel like, in a sense, you you were the creator of your own reality? Or is that something that's kind of come upon you with this work, you know? <laughs> You know, I think I knew from the time that I was little that I could have an impact because I stated very, I think when I was two or three years old, that I wanted to be a nurse. And there were lots of barriers to me to get there, um, but I got there. And so I always had sort of this self-deterministic attitude about things, you know, and felt that if I worked hard and just figured it out, that... I could accomplish it. And then once I found out about intention, I got even more excited because that really meant that I am the, my own creator. Yeah. It has to do with what I tell myself and where I put myself and what information I take in and what I want for my life. But also there's this aspect, isn't there, of the, the trust, the divine bit that you can't override your higher self. And there is something kind of bigger than our little you know creator aspects and I think that's the hardest thing for people actually to do on many levels is to trust the divine um I just I just did a little bit of market research before I came on here and asked three people who are staying with me who are actually all in their 20s if they could if they could have an intention running 24 hours a day what would it be and um you know one of them said said to trust that everything that's happening is to assist in this kind of higher evolution towards purpose um another one said they wanted their intuit to be able to really tell what was intuition and what was not and what was really running from their true selves rather than their program selves and the other one said but they wanted balance which is the thing of coming between you know manifested reality and that higher um level of reality basically and finding the balance or the connection between the two yeah. so i think that's what we really crave isn't it as as humans it is we really do we really yeah. really do not all this other stuff going on tell me about the buddha relics device now ah, 
Oh, you want to go there first? Yes, let's save, that. let's save that for last because I think okay. that's going to be the longest conversation. Oh, I want okay. to the other two things first because they're a little bit shorter. Okay. So, so we have so we have our intentions running, and we've been talking a lot um, for the last year about what's next, and you know PTSD, all that kind of stuff. Then we had a graduate student contact us who is uh, starting an experiment next month, actually, and wants to use intention to improve athletic performance. Cool, yes. So it's a, it, a, we're working with a college swimming and diving team. The, these are people that are, are on the path to go to the Olympics to see mm -hmm. if we can use intention to improve their performance. Now, we won't know what the results are until uh, about eight months from now. But it's fascinating to me that we'll intend for all these characteristics like greater lung capacity and speed and form and all that kind of stuff to see what kind of there because it seems to me they're they're primarily physical and some mental attitudes in there. So I'll be really fascinated to see. Uh, what and that's actually are. measurable, isn't it, as well, which is quite cool. Yeah. It is because all these folks that are going to be the, in the experiment, they have years worth of data. Yeah. They know what their performance is. They know what their rate of improvement is, you know, as per their practice and all that kind of stuff. So we'll really have some good data, I think, coming out of this about that's, that. Yeah, that's really exciting. And are you running this experiment? You're yes, still I'm running yeah. this experiment. Yes. That's and exciting. the other experiment that's really exciting, and this is way back to when I met Bill Tiller and wanted to use the intention device to improve the hospital. Well, we had somebody approach us um, of a higher educational organization, a nonprofit um, college. And we're going to start next week, I believe, um, running an intention for them to meet all of their goals and metrics for the school. So they want their students to be successful. They want to have uh, more donations. They want to have um, uh, better, te not better teachers, but they want to have excellence in teaching. They want to be, I mean, they have all these measures that they have data from last year and what they did. And we'll be able to compare it to um, what we get this year. And we're going to run that intention for about a year as well to see how all now this is a I mean it's a um, compared to broadcasting to a person this is massive this is massive this is changing yeah. the systems of the world because what <laughs> in education then you can do it in hospitals then you can do it in you could that's this is amazing yeah yeah because it will even affect the community because they have community goals community engagement goals so it's the campus it's the people it's the community um, so I'm really excited about that. Really that excited. That's actually stunning, stunning work, really. I mean, that that's very, very exciting for humanity. I mean, I suppose you can feel that humanity is in a massive shift right now. I mean, the fact that this is even being recognized, that people are coming to you and wanting to do this. Hey, how the... <laughs> what happens with the like the swimming like is it classified as cheating if everybody's or is it the same thing you know is it like everybody's rooting for their team is that the same kind of thing because we all know the data on people you know for example if you have teams and they're playing at home in front of their home audience they're more likely to win aren't they that's right because they get the energy boost of from course. all those people but it's short-lived during the game so that's one of our questions, you know, if you, and swimming is an individual sport. Yeah. Right. So you're competing against yourself, really. Yeah. So, um, and against whatever the record is. So we're going to be very interested to see how all of that works. And we don't think it's cheating because it's not, we're not doping. We're not, you know, doing anything yeah, yeah, yeah. extra except intention. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and so far that's not on the prohibited list. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. Well, so we'll, 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 we'll probably try and throw that at us. But, you know, every, intention is everything really. And I suppose it's it's just redirecting what's already there in a positive, purposeful manner that assists humanity, isn't it? 
It, it is. And for the swimmers in particular, you know, those, those, I mean, they're pre-Olympics, they're Olympic track people. So they're thinking about this all the time. Yeah. They're trying to improve their speed. They're trying to improve their lung capacity. They're actively working on this. So it's not like, um, it's not like me sitting in my chair waiting for the prosperity intention. To yeah, or being to an autistic child who maybe doesn't even know there's a beam going on kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so it's an active process for them anyway. This really just strengthens that interface and inserts the information in there so it can go up and come back and manifest in the 3D. Yeah. And it's 24-7 instead of, you know, I'm sure they think about their sport a lot, but probably not every minute of every day yeah 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 and the other thing is you know like with the the educational one as well I'm just because you have this aspect within the intentionality which is not to override the soul's higher purpose so basically you're you're enhancing everything that is within the soul's higher purpose that that alignment which can only be beneficial for everyone involved Sure, because and that's that's actually extraordinary because so often our egos are trying to, you know, to push us down the wrong paths, basically. And in institution, we we're watching this play out, aren't we? Yes. You know, to our detriment, or you know, anyway, whatever. We've we've obviously hit <laughs> Ross's point at this point, but um, yeah, I mean, that's that's really beautiful work within itself because it's you're literally changing. Um, I guess the the community goals and the you know the the overriding trajectory of how the institutions play out, if you like, all, all their regulations and aspirations. Well, here's how we view it. We are not viewing it as we're changing anything. We're viewing it as we're clearing the path. Yeah, you're directing more, you're assisting in here's a signpost. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna we're facilitating them. Yeah. having the space and the configuration and the information to achieve what they want to achieve. You're kind of repatterning them, actually. You're because because we know that coherence actually, you know, when you look at coherence in something like cells, all that's doing, or you know, crystallized water with Dr. Motor, whatever, all that's doing is actually making things uh, the geometry more symmetrical and more beautiful. So it's you're actually just bringing more symmetry in, aren't you, to to the patterning of an institution? Yeah. 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 So we'll see how that manifests. That's amazing. How long is that experiment going on for then? Or just um, it will start next week and we'll we'll collect the data for a year and see where we're at. That's that's wow, great. That's so cool. <laughs> I know. So you have to have me back in a year and see how all these turn out. Oh, that, pleasure. <laughs> Um, but the really the I, I mean I'm excited about all of this, but I'm particularly excited about the Buddha relics. Finally, so, you're gonna tell us. <laughs> I, know, I know. So um, I, I'm not a Buddhist, and uh, I learned about. We had a friend uh, come to our house and say, uh, you know, have you ever thought about hosting the Buddha relics? And it's like, well, what's that? Well, apparently um, in Tibet. Every Buddha from the first historical Buddha, when they die, they're cremated. And in their cremains are these pearlescent things that are reputed to be their essential wisdom distilled down. The higher frequency the Buddha, the more of these things they are. And they've kept these. Pearls of wisdom. Head. Is that where that comes and from? Wisdom. Isn't that what? amazing? That doesn't, you, God, that's amazing. So it's almost like crystallized information in a pearlescent form. It is. That's and, interesting, and yeah. So in the early 2000s, um, the Dalai Lama conceived of a project to create a healing center and a large statue of the Maitreya Buddha. Now, Maitreya translated um, directly from trans Sanskrit means unconditional love. And so they call Maitreya the loving kindness Buddha. So the Dalai, so they took um, oh like fifty different relics from different Buddhas and put them on tour. So they had to find a host person to set up an exhibit, and the public could come for free. 
and see these relics. And it really wasn't so much of a see these relics, but it was an experience of the relics. Yes, yeah, so you. I imagine what you come is you come into the kind of memory field or the bio field of the the pearls, and then your memory field is picking up information and being entrained by it. Yeah. How many? Just out of curiosity, do you know how many pearls? Like, how many pearls the, the Buddhas have? Like, is it three pearls? I mean, I guess it's you know what's the amount of pearls? I know no, I can different see. with each Buddha, but. It is different with each Buddha. And I will tell you, there were some that had just a few, like 10 or under, and there were some that had a whole cup full. Wow. So it was, it was really, it was amazing. Uh, it, it was amazing because um, in the exhibit, we got to learn about who the Buddha was, what their main focus and mission in life was. And then we got to see and feel their, um, their essentially their essence. So you, what, you actually touched it. Or you just um, you to touch it, or you just come within the yeah, approximate. No, they were, they were. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And how did it feel then? Oh, I was in another dimension. For the first time, we did we hosted their exhibit. Um, it was in another dimension for three days, and we were fortunate because we actually at night they pack up all the relics. And they bring them with them. And we got to keep them in our house for their three-day stay. Oh, so, oh, that's probably entrained your entire house as well. Oh, yeah. That's oh, amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. So they started out on their tour in the early 2000s and went around the world. We didn't become aware of them till about 2012. And so then hosted a couple times. But after that first time, um, we decided to... Dr. Tiller became aware of this as well. Same person that told us was telling him, you ought to check this out because this is really something. And so he had um, devices imprinted with the frequency. So all we did was we left, instead of having meditators, because you know, the relics can't meditate, right? But they definitely had their own energy field. So we put the devices underneath the display table with all the relics on it and left it for three days. And uh, got it back out and, and tested it. It was imprinted with their frequency. And the amazing thing is about this is that that frequency, since that imprinting with the relics, the frequency has not degraded. So when we do it with meditators, it lasts three to six months. The relics devices are still going strong. How do you say, so, so how, just on practical level, how do you test for the frequency of the relics? So we use dowsing. To tell oh, okay. Them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We use dowsing. So, um, yeah, because we don't have a meter <laughs> yet. Yeah, no, I was like, how are you? Uh, but I, you know, you could also have a practice meditator that's going in and checking. But then obviously there's the complications with that. And that. Okay. So dowsing. And do you use more than one person to douse? No, no. No, no. We use a team. Okay. Yeah. Have it. Yeah. Um, and so, so. My husband and I actually have two of these devices ourselves from when we had the uh, relics devices. And so we started thinking about, well, well, actually, Dr. Tiller, um, in probably the mid, probably around 2015 or so, he actually wanted to do some testing to see what this frequency was all about. And so he did. And he wrote, there's a white paper on his website white paper 25 that details the whole experiment i'm writing it down i've read quite a lot of the white papers i yeah. can't remember if i've read that i mean i haven't read that one but yeah okay so what um what he did was he set he had a little casita by his house and so and nobody was staying there so he set up the buddha relics device and then just measured in the way that he usually measures air temperature and all these other things. And so, um, and nothing really happened for a while. And then um, he invited the relics to change the space and increase the thermodynamic potential. And over the next, I think, 30 days or so, it, it went up two and a half times what it was equal to if the room, if there was so much energy in that room, it was equal to if the room had been heated to 700 degrees. Wow. That's how much energy, but there was no temperature change. I mean, it was a regular temperature, right? That's amazing. And that, that has a lot of 
that you know the invitation aspect because quite a lot in our you know some of my shamanic training we're invited to do something mm -hmm. so that's very interesting yeah well the the um and the next thing that happened so he did that with the room and then his basic water experiment where he um, has the ph go up or down he wanted to see if the relics device would do that so he set up water and he set up a relics device and nothing happened and nothing happened and he got frustrated after a period of time and one day he said to the device damn it ph up now he didn't swear. He was not a man that swore. So you knew he was really frustrated. And within a short period of time, I think about 30 minutes, that pH went up. And I tell you, Sarita, it was scary because wow. it's like just saying something in front of, I mean, how is this going to work? So he didn't do, he designed some experiments, but they were never carried out after that because there's so much caution about this device because it's so very powerful so now fast forward to where we are now so wait a minute so what do you think so what did you think caused it to go up so quickly was it the the frustration the swearing or the command or all of it like or because that because the propulsion of the emotion behind swearing is like do, you know, like, okay, I'm in, like, just get, I'm annoyed with it now. Just do it. It's like, there's more energetic propulsion, isn't there? And energy. Yeah. I think it was this, the stern command. Yeah. Okay. Strength and the veracity of the command that he gave, because it was very solid. <laughs> Damn it is not really that much of a. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Bless him. It's such a sweetheart to it. I mean, I don't know him buzz me, but whenever I've heard him speak, you can like. <laughs> you can tell he was kind of an earth angel um yeah. okay so yeah so the the force of the commands made the difference yes yeah and so we think it was uh giving the relics device a command and so after that i mean we have two devices in our house after that we were sort of pretty careful around what we said around the devices because we weren't really sure you know oh, this is another and question i had for you as well so basically when I know that when you first started doing the autism um, imprinting to help children um, with autism, one of the things that always seemed to happen was their speech and language improved. And as I read that, I was wondering, you know, around the whole, I am the word and the word is, you know, God. And, and the fact that, you know, what we proclaim is, and we have this extraordinary capacity to proclaim our reality, you know, and, you know, thought is powerful, but thought with proclamation is another level of power. And perhaps those experiments were showing us how, how important you know, proclamation and speech and language actually is for humans in terms of creating their own reality. And obviously you brought it up here again now, and it was one of my questions. So I'm like asking you, you know, what are your thoughts around that? Yeah, it, um, you know, I firmly believe that every word, every emotion creates my reality. It does. Because I speak it, the energy goes out. It's just, and it's, it's a frequency. Every word has its own particular frequency. Every um, uh, sentence, everything. When we do an intention, we muscle test all of the words and, and the phrases and all of that because it's all very important and we have to get it specific. But the other thing about Tiller is, because there are a lot of people out there who say that you shouldn't speak in negatives, but Tiller's experiments actually said, use negatives. They were like, we, we don't want, let's say, anxiety, for example. He had no compunction about doing that. And it did reduce anxiety because there's a lot of, and so it's difficult to know sometimes because I think a lot of the teachings that come through some of them are indoctrinations in order to make us a bit more stupid, actually. And and I think his his in, his experiments actually proved that saying you don't want something can be powerful also 
It, you know, the universe doesn't take out the word no. It's like the universe doesn't understand the word no. And I, so it's all, that's always been like, if you like, a bone of contention if, in different spiritual practices. And you actually discovered that actually you can, you, can, you, you can do that. You can do that. And we need the whole range. I mean, I think that whole indoctrination to don't use negative terms keeps us in this end of the range. We need the whole range. We have the whole range inside of us. And if we suppress half of it, because we've been told by some expert that we're not supposed to do that. That's just suppressing us. Yeah. And he's actually got documented evidence to the contrary of that, which, which is, which is fascinating. Oh, I had another question for you, but it's gone off my mind. That's so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm speaking and proper. Yeah. So do you think that there was, so another question I had is, do you think that there was changing speech and language first, because that's the first thing that needs to change in, if you like, the autistic children in this case, in order to assist them with healing? Well, we didn't, the intention for the autistic children was about coherence. Yes, exactly. But it was their speech and language that changed first. Speech and language changed, along with other things for, and it, it varied by child. So speech and language wasn't always the first thing to change, but it always did change. Do you see? Yeah, okay. So it so, was fundamentally important. I, I, I had sort of read that, that, in a lot of cases, it was one of the things that that really did change first. Yeah. Um, and it just seems to, to me that in order to heal, perhaps on any level, we need to be more coherent with our language and speech. We need to be more, I agree, and we need to be more aligned between who we are and how we speak and what we speak and who we speak to. We just need to be more aligned. That interface you know you're back to the interface so I, it's another question i had for you You may not be able to answer this this is the one i'd forgotten that i remembered <laughs> is what do you think about um humor or sarcasm or the um you know if you like the em the emotion that's going behind the words you know like does the you know do you think source consciousness recognizes if you're being sar sarcastic and you're making a joke behind words or are they just a proclamation well i think it's a proclamation but i also think there's an energy behind yeah and it depends on what your emotion is behind the word sometimes people say sarcastic things to be funny sometimes yeah. they say them to be hurtful sometimes they say them because they're hiding behind what they really think yeah the way to get it on the table and i think source is very um astute at recognizing what the energy is behind it and carrying that out or bringing it back to the person yeah okay thank you for that it's, it's good to know your uh, your thoughts on that yeah so i interrupted your buddha relics uh experiment so please continue <laughs> i don't know where we were well um so uh so dr tiller had raised the ph and it was a, a little um uh, unnerving because of how fast it happened. And so we didn't do any more experiments with it. Uh, there were no more actual experience, experiments carried out to completion with the relics. <clears throat> However, we decided um, probably about a year ago that, you know, our world's a mess and we need to get consciousness raising um, frequencies out in the world as fast as we can. And so we have this, we have the ability to make what we call Buddha relic daughters. So we have the two devices that my husband and I have the two devices that are, um, that we imprint um, regular devices and then we call them daughters. So we test to make sure that they actually are imprinted. And, you know, it's interesting because um, and I haven't tracked this yet, but it takes uh, between two days to 10 days to imprint a daughter. And so I'm not quite sure what the variable is, if it's the state of the world or what's happening there. But we have daughters and we've been working a little bit with the daughters, but we got a, uh, an invitation from a yoga center in the UK uh, to work with a daughter um, and see how, how it works to, add. I mean, we have only about a million questions about it, right? Um, <laughs> a million, yeah. Only about a million, but they, this is a group that they've been together, I think for about 15 years. And so same people. 
And so they have a specific method of intention that they use and we're putting a device in their space and having them work with their method of intention and sort of our method of imprinting and we're gonna track the results. So it's a very exciting project. Very that exciting. Is, that is so exciting. Uh, yeah, I find the whole concept really interesting. Yeah, because their, you know, their issues, their members, um, they have had a series of health, health issues with their folks. So we're going to be working with health. And guess what? Their yoga center was impacted by the pandemic and the lockdown and all of all of that. So we're also going to be working with supporting the yoga center. So I'll be that's there. really beautiful. Have you read the David Hawkins? Um, uh, yes. Yeah, so the, the 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 I can't remember if it's called maps of consciousness, but he 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 um, measures the levels of consciousness, and of course he discovered that one avatar, which in this case would be Buddha, um, you know, or someone like Christ, they they affect changes. I don't know how many. Let's say I like, I'll just make it up: five million people or a billion people. One avatar. So if you're seeding these daughters, then you know how much consciousness can you change quite quickly. And because the world has gone over 200, hasn't it? So we've gone from, I can't remember what it is. Is it anger to courage? Have we gone from? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Well, we've been to courage, basically. Yeah. yeah. So, I think it's integrity, maybe. We've gone, we're heading towards integrity. And that's we? Why all yeah. stuff is, is, you know, being revealed and it looks like it's a mess. But, you know, in the physics world, before things can reorganize to a higher level, a higher gauge symmetry, they have to disorganize. Yeah, absolutely. So all this chaos is actually a good sign. It is. No, absolutely. It's a breakdown because I think what we're doing is we've got to create something that is completely new. Otherwise, we're just recreating facets of the old thing. So it has all really got to disintegrate. Why do you call them daughters? I'm sorry? Why daughters and not sons, just out of curiosity? You know, I, I don't know. We... we the words just came to us. We called the original ones mothers. And because mothers are the ones that give birth. Yeah. We called the other ones daughters. We haven't tried to imprint using the daughters yet, but it was the female lineage that we chose to use for this. I know yeah. I can't give the rationale why. It just yeah. Right. In Intuition. There yeah. you go. <laughs> and it's working, clearly. Yeah. So, wow, that's so exciting. So when are you starting this then? So this will start um, mid-August. Yeah. So in a week or so, this one will start. The yoga center will start. Yeah. Gosh, that's absolutely amazing. So a year from now, you'll have some really concrete results on all of those experiments, basically. We will. And just one more comment about the yoga center. You know, um, London is not in the best shape either uh, in terms of, of the world. And so this device, besides the intention, this device will be running. So we don't have a clue, um, but we'll be fascinated to see how it affects not just the group that's going to be working with it, but it'll be broadcasting out of the center. So how does it affect the participants? How does it affect the community? Um, I'll be really curious to see. That's that. amazing. I don't know how you would measure something like that. I guess you just, it's not like you can trust the mainstream media to give you accurate <laughs> about what's going on in London but yeah I suppose you could muscle test the level of consciousness in London and uh and then uh see you know different aspects of that and then uh and then see how it's that's all integrating that's that's in this is interesting stuff wow amazing yeah. Yeah. um fantastic well I think yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful place to pause. And I'm going to say pause our conversation because I know there's going to be a third. <laughs> um, I it, It's very inspiring to listen to you. It's, you know, it's really heart filling to, to see scientific organizations, you, you know, quantitatively making an effort to study and create change within the world you know it, it it really is beautiful to see what you're doing and and I know I speak on behalf of all of my um listeners and saying thank you thank you for doing the work you do thank you so much for letting me tell you and all your listeners about it
yeah yeah and yeah and once again I'll, I'll put the details so if anybody wants to sign up for your intentions and obviously you can also donate to the tiller um foundation and i'm sure all your all donations are massively appreciated but i mean even signing up for an intention is donating to the ongoing work and um seeing how things impact so i really would um invite all of you to give it a go <laughs> um so yeah we've got some hardcore meditators on this channel who love experimenting and seeing changes so yeah go and have a look it's it's um What's your website? Tillerfoundation.org, isn't it? Yes, tillerfoundation.org. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. Well, Cindy, thank you so much. Such a pleasure to talk to you. You've got beautiful energy. Yeah, thank you, Sarita. You as well. And can't wait to see what happens next. Yeah, looking forward to talking to you again. Thank you so much. Take care. You take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.